just down the road from the train disaster. We've come to a little township called Oruru. Lovely little town, a couple of uh, points of interest. One here, I'm standing next to one of the oldest trees in the area. It is a river red gum, I believe, and it's got a girth of nearly 11 meters round. Uh, last measured it was 10.89. Um, the first limbs are six meters up and uh, it's not a tall tall tree but man some of those branches they're as big as a normal tree they're massive this one's been trimmed pretty regularly by I think, an arbitrist uh, they do uh, have the name of a widow maker and that's because they uh, shed their branches quite a lot uh, especially in windy conditions so if you happen to be standing underneath one <laughs> or camped underneath one or you've got a house near one you want to make sure it's well trimmed so this tree is estimated at over 500 years old. So she's a, or she or he, is a sure big granddaddy. Um, she's got some photos of me hugging the baby, but you know, look at that, can't even. Oh, there is that side, there's that side. It's massive. Anyway, got a couple little features to have a look at in town. Let's go and have a look at the next one. So here's the other feature in uh, Oroto, the size of the main street. I mean, that's on my right hand side, that's going that way. And on my left hand side, it's going that way. And there's enough of a median strip here in the middle to have a, an absolute park. <laughs> it's huge. So it's obviously done that way for, um, I guess the, uh, the stocks, the stock, the bullet, and things like that like you can get in places like Kalgoorlie and things but uh, look at that they've even got a, a monument in the middle of the road so it's one big street anyway now it's time to go and get some supplies fill up grab some fizzies and uh, head for our next destination Cracking spot last night. We're uh, here uh, just out of uh, Oru and I think it's the Pekina River or near near Pekina. Um, yeah, really nice gener generosity of a farmer. He's uh, got a gate down here on the on the road and he says you're allowed. It's private property, but the overnight camping is allowed. And uh, there's a nice little spot here that I'm parked at, which is yeah, it's close to the road, but hardly a car went by last night. Had some visitors there. They've gone through a little dip to get into that little spot there or if you like a little bit of a view you can head up that road over there and uh, there's about two or three spots up there but uh, definitely a little bit of four-wheel drive or uh, um, a bit of skill I could I wouldn't go up there with my front wheel drive anyway onwards but uh, a huge big thank you to that farmer out there for uh, having this little uh, property for us to lay our head it was absolutely superb last night great sunset and beautiful starry skies so we're on the move to another location. Um, we're going to see if we can hook up some power. Down the road from our campsite I pulled up to this um, you might have heard me talking earlier down the track about George Goiter um, I've done a little bit more research back in 1865 this bloke rode a horse and walked about 5,000 kilometers uh, to a point over on the uh, the east over to the, uh, the west um, mapping where uh, sustainable farming could be and he did that by following basically like um, the the salt bushes and things like that those hardy plants that could survive and he was able to work out where the moisture level and things would sustain the the wheat the crops the the farms the 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 sheep and the cattle and things so uh, a pretty significant um, bloke here obviously uh, since then um, a lot of the uh, farming practices have improved with as I said the wells 
and um, the type of crops that are genetically grown for uh, heat tolerances and um, a selection of um, stock that can handle the heat as well. So a lovely uh, memorial. Um, I think this is one of the, the furthest parts north or something before it sort of swings back down again. Um, but yeah, as you can see, yeah, there's crops growing all around here quite happily, but a, a nice expensive, uh, expanse of uh, land out here too. But yeah, a lovely memorial, George Reuter. So we're lucky that Dean actually went inside because we've actually had a major water failure um, under the sink. Um, it's a red pipe so it was to do with hot water. So I'll take you inside to poor Dean who's actually cleaning all the mess out. It sprayed upwards so it went in the stove, it's gone into all our kitchen stuff. So how are you going babe? I can't really see what I'm meant to be doing because it's behind timber and everything, but what I'm trying to do is just get the pipe back into the fitting and feeling like a positive, like click, click, I'm in kind of thing, you know? Okay, okay. But We're staying an extra day here at Bollaroo Central. We had a little water leak. Um, yeah, one of our little fittings just gave way. And uh, yeah, at the moment, we're taking advantage of this lovely sun and a little bit of uh, breeze to just uh, dry everything out. <laughs> Spot yeah. <laughs>